This is the first of two videos about the seat product model. You'll need to know about the concepts of district magnitude and assembly size. If you don't understand these concepts, please check out the other videos in this series. The seat product model is a model which explains how many parties and how many effective parties there are in a political system. It's called the seat product model because it's based on multiplying two terms together or taking their product. The seat product is district magnitude times assembly size, or M times S. In this video, though, we'll focus more on district magnitude. Let's start by thinking about the number of parties that can win seats in a district. I'm going to use that little apostrophe to show that we're talking about something happening in a district rather than nationally. And I'll use that little zero to show that we're talking about the raw number of parties rather than the effective number. If our district has a magnitude of 1, then the smallest number of parties that can win a seat is just 1. We can't have zero seat-winning parties. Similarly, we can't have more parties win seats than there are seats available, and so the largest number of seat-winning parties is also 1. If our district magnitude is 5, then the smallest number of parties that can win a seat, or the lower bound, as I call it here, is still 1, as happens when one party wins all five seats. The largest number of parties that can win a seat, or the upper bound, is 5. This happens when five different parties each win one seat. We could repeat this exercise for a larger district magnitude, but the pattern is pretty obvious. This means that if someone asked us to guess how many distinct parties would win seats in a district of magnitude M, we could say that it has to be between the lower bound of 1 and the upper bound of M. We would never be wrong if we said this, but it's not very informative. So can we move beyond these bounds? We might think that a good guess as to the number of seat-winning parties could involve blending or averaging the lower and upper bound. For example, we might take the arithmetic mean of these two numbers. We'd add them together and divide by 2. Unfortunately, the arithmetic mean doesn't really work. Let's take the Netherlands as an example. The Netherlands has a single nationwide electoral district with a magnitude of 150. In this special case, the national and district level outcomes are the same thing. Here, the lower bound on the number of seat winning parties is 1, the upper bound is 150, and the arithmetic mean is just over 75. Now, Dutch politics is certainly fragmented, but there aren't 75 parties in the country's parliament. So we need to use a different average, the geometric mean. The geometric mean of two numbers involves multiplying and then taking the square root. It's going to give us a smaller number than the arithmetic mean, but let's see how much smaller it is in practice. We go back to our Dutch example. The lower bound is still 1, the upper bound is still 150, but the square root of the product of these numbers is now around 12, a much more realistic number. Indeed, if we compare it to the number of seat-winning parties in the last three elections, we can see it's a fairly decent guess. You might be wondering at this point why use this geometric mean. There's one practical reason. It works quite well. But I can give you an intuition that might help you. Suppose we didn't just ask how many parties will win seats, but went on to also ask how many seats will those parties win. If we've got a district magnitude 25, then the answers to those two questions look like this. For the geometric mean, then for the number of seat-winning parties, our reasoning is just what it was before. For the number of seats won by those parties, well, we know the lower bound is 1 and the upper bound is 25, and so we get the same number. These two answers are consistent, because five seat-winning parties, each winning five seats, adds up to 25 seats, which is our district magnitude. If instead we use the arithmetic mean, then our guesses end up inconsistent. We guessed 13 seat-winning parties, each winning 13 seats, but that's impossible because 13 times 13 is 169, far more than the number of seats available. So far, we've worked out how to make a decent guess as to the number of seat-winning parties at district level. In the next video, 
we move beyond that to the national level.